Good morning and welcome to our service of worship here at Heritage United Church on this Boxing Day Sunday. My goodness, the season of Advent has come to an end and now we are in the season of Christmas. It's hard to believe that it was just just over a month ago that this all began once again as we journeyed together through the season of Advent leading up to that joyous night on Christmas Eve. And I just want to begin this service by saying thank you. Thank you to all of you who have journeyed with me during this time. I think of the musicians first who have been behind the scenes putting together so much beautiful music for us to enjoy during the season. You know, it takes a lot, it takes a lot. Piano playing with vocal accompaniments to be shared with our singers and and shared with our other musicians that are able to participate at this time. And I know we are missing a few of our musicians that would normally be participating with the French horn and the organ, and we do miss your parts. And I hope that as time unfolds, we'll be able to be back in our worship services together here, and everyone will be able to participate. But for now, to those of you that have been doing your part with the music, from putting the music together to sending it out for us to share with one another so that it can be shared with the congregation to the hymn images that join with them with the lyrics and uploading that to our youtube channel so others can enjoy the hymns that we so much love as well i also thank all of you who journeyed through our mistletoe market once again your participation whether it was making some baking or crafting or or buying or just you know being a part of the of the excitement of all of that it was a it was a journey and I, I know that it brings community together and I thank you for that as well. We will be doing more things as we head into 2022. We're, we're just there. Uh, it's just around the corner and I am hopeful that uh, we will find them ways to continue to find ways of meeting in community. For the present time, we will not be meeting again in person. Uh, it was wonderful to have some of you out a few weeks back. But with the way things are at the moment, for everyone's safety, we will be continuing to worship online. And we will keep you informed as time unfolds and the decisions are made as to when it is safe to try it again here together in this time, in this space. So you are with me. I know you are in heart and soul as we worship together this morning. And so we gather to once again Hear the angels announce the good news of Jesus' birth. To ponder the wonder of Jesus as Mary did when she held her child. To glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw love lying in a manger. To remember that Jesus' love was an out-of-the-box kind of love. On that first Christmas, the prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits caring for strangers and friends alike, instructing followers to love their neighbors. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, he meant everyone. His love was so profound that even from the very first day, the angels couldn't keep from singing. We've been singing along with the chorus of the angels ever since. Gloria, alleluia, Christ is born. And so let us join our voices once again in our opening hymn this morning, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Let us sing.
Pray together. O oh God, Christmas may be over, but the celebration, all that Jesus means for us, has just begun. Over years ago, hope, peace, joy, and love came to light in the birth of the Christ child. By the fire of Jesus, our hearts like ours have been warmed ever since. And still today, we pray that love burns strong within such that friends and strangers find comfort and warmth by its glow. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And all through the season of Advent, each and every week we lit a candle on our Advent wreath to bring the light here into our service, a light that grew stronger and stronger until the night of Christmas Eve when the Christland candle was once again lit. And so on this Boxing Day Sunday, the first Sunday after Christmas, may the light of Christ be as strong as ever, shining forth the way. Amen. Welcome to our time here on the chancel steps on this Boxing Day Sunday. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas at your homes and that it was magical and special even if maybe you were sp spending it with a smaller group once again this year to stay safe but i have to say hello to all my friends here on the steps mrs bonnet and peepers the chick and taz hi fair crow how are you doing and chimp i hope you all had a good christmas oh summer bear i know i bet it was chilly for you but you've got the warmth of all your friends here with you especially that of jim our love bear and of course, our guardian angel bear. Hi, Betty Boop. Oh, Moose, it's still nice to see you. And our gingerbread man. We're almost out of gingerbread man season, but never too late to have a gingerbread cookie, is there? Hi, sweater bear, nice to see you. Oh, and to our first responders, my goodness, with the city getting kind of crazy again right now with things. Our hearts and prayers go out to all of you. Thank you for your continued work in our communities. And of course, to Sally and Danny and Suzanne. And yes, to Lucinda, how are you, my friend? And to Joe. Hi, yes, all the people are back at their homes now. I think they did have a good Christmas. Did you have a good Christmas? You did. You know, I thought today we could talk about some of the things that were our favorite things that we got for Christmas. We'll start with that anyway. What's that, Lucinda? Oh. Lucinda said that she's got another crown that she'd like to be able to, to wear that she got for Christmas. And Joe? Oh, you did, did you, Joe? Joe said that uh, he's got a new shovel for, for shoveling the snow. Those are great gifts to get. And I wonder what our friends at home got. Maybe there was a special toy, or you were waiting for a book that you wanted to read, or maybe some winter boots or a new coat. But you know, on this Sunday, Long ago, it started out that Boxing Day wasn't so much a day about remembering what we get, but what we can give. And there was a tradition where, which I'll be talking more about later in our service, about how people would give to the poor. They would give things that they needed so that they too could have a, a good day. And so I'm thinking about ways we can give. And for our boys and girls at home, I encourage you to think of what you could give this day. What could you give away? Hmm. Maybe you've got a toy that you don't play with anymore and you could give it away so that a little boy or girl 
could play with it. Or maybe you've outgrown some of your clothes and maybe some of these might even have been your favorites when they fit. Just imagine how much joy that would bring to another little boy or girl to be able to wear those clothes that no longer fit you. Or you might simply just make a phone call to somebody you know that maybe has been alone over the holidays or not with as many family and maybe feeling a little bit sad. You could give them a phone call to brighten their day. There's lots of ways that we can give. May you find something this week to bring a smile and warm someone's heart. And I hope you had a great Christmas. Until next time on the Chancel Steps. Bye-bye. This morning is a time of celebration as the days continue in this Christmas season. And we celebrate in the various ways that we are able to give. We give of our time, as I often talk about, because time is valuable. And that time that we share with others means a lot to them, whether that just be a, as simple as a call on the phone to let them know that you're thinking about them. As I was driving into the church this morning, they were talking about acts of kindness, simple act of a smile or a kind gesture of a wave when you've been let into the flow of traffic are all ways we give. And of course, we also give our monetary donations to the church to help to simply keep the lights on and to keep this ministry strong. And so at this time, I invite you to reflect on the ways that you too can give to the ministry and mission of our church. dedicate our offering, let us pray. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you for all the ways this offering supports the work of our church. Glory to you for all the ways these gifts extend care in our neighborhood. Glory to you for all the ways our support transforms and saves lives through our mission and service. Glory to you, O God. Amen. With the rush of Christmas just past and New Year's on the horizon, many of us would benefit from slowing down and listening for fresh ways Jesus inspires us to live generously. I invite you to intentionally pray in silence with me this morning, setting aside the hustle and bustle of the season to be attentive to the Spirit. Let us pray together. 
loving God on this day that has become so much about buying and getting deals. We ask that you turn our attention to gratitude and generosity. Gratitude for what we already have and generosity to give what we can. Quiet us now to open our hearts to you. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way you are calling us to give up our time this week. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way you are calling us to share our talent or ability this week. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way you are calling us to be generous with what we have this week. God, inspire us to live generously, not boxing in what we have to offer, but sharing it with our family, friends, and neighbors at home and around the world. When we are tempted to limit love, open our hearts and minds. Stir our hearts to care deeply, to live compassionately, to impress the world with love. In the silence of our hearts, we take a moment to also bring our concerns and also our joys to you for people in our lives. In the way of the one who taught us what it means to love our neighbor, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our tr trespasses and as we forgive our, those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us hear some words from Scripture. I'm reading from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, your highest heavens and your waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lighting and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds kings of the earth and all nations. You princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up his people, a horn, the praise of all his saints of Israel. The people close to his heart praise the Lord. The word given to us.
just one last time, I would like to read the wonderful Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. As though you're hearing it for the very first time, you may even want to close your eyes and visualize the scene. Note the variety of ways the characters in the story respond to the good news. Put yourself in their shoes. What would your response be? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. God bless these readings. Amen. Today's service has been adapted from a resource shared with me from the United Church of Canada's Mission and Service Team. I think you will find it very fitting for a Boxing Day service. My first reflection, love out of the box. What do you typically do on Boxing Day? Fall into a turkey coma? Hit the sails. Tidy up after the aftermath of company and presents. For me, it's going to be a cup of tea, a good movie, and probably a nap. After the shepherds visited the Holy Family and shared what the angels had told them about Jesus, namely that he would bring good news of great joy, Scripture says Mary treasured their words and pondered them in her heart. In other words, she grew silent and reflective. On the other hand, the shepherds went on their way glorifying and praising God. Treasure, ponder, glorify, praise. All appropriate responses to receiving profound news. In Matthew's Gospel, the Magi arrive on the scene offering gifts. Their response to hearing the good news of Jesus' birth is to offer a gift that symbolizes who Jesus was and what he would become. Boxing Day is a great day for treasuring the Christmas story and pondering the call it places on us. It is a good day for glorifying and praising. It's a great day to contemplate generosity. As I'll explain after we sing, Boxing Day was originally a day to give. What can Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Boxing Day came to be associated with turkey sandwiches, football, and discounts, it was known as a day to serve those who were poor. There are various theories about how Boxing Day came to be. One theory suggests it came from the practice of giving boxes to servants along with a day off following Christmas. Another suggests that the tradition came from a custom in the late Roman, early Christian era, wherein alms boxes were placed in churches, were given to those who were living in poverty on the feast of St. Stephen, a Christian martyr known for charitable acts. Incidentally, the feast of St. Stephen falls on the second day of Christmas tide, and in some churches, Stephen is still celebrated today. Regardless of which historical thread you follow, Boxing Day was always meant to be a day for contemplation and generosity. This morning, I would invite you to align yourselves with the roots of this day, a day that calls us to be compassionate. Jesus, the greatest gift of all, was born for all. He made that clear in the life he would grow up to lead. He fulfilled the angel's promise that he would bring good news of great joy for all the people. Notice the scripture doesn't say some of the people. It says all of the people. Just because someone just lives next to us doesn't mean we should care more for them than we do for someone who lives around the block or in a different city or country away. God calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. When Jesus was asked who our neighbor is, he essentially said, everyone. I think it's safe to say that we all like to receive gifts, yet the power of giving makes us our lives richer when we share what we have 
And there is a greater inner joy that comes from helping others to better their lives. Truly giving from the heart fills your life with joy and nourishes your soul. Giving provides an intricate reward that's far more valuable than the gift. As Gandhi said, to find yourself, lose yourself in the service of others. Academic research and thousands of years of human history confirm that achieving meaning, fulfillment, and happiness in life comes from making others happy and not from being self-centered. Mother Teresa is a famous example of this. She found fulfillment in giving of herself to others. She helped change the expression on dying people's faces from distress and fear to calmness and serenity. She made their undeniable pain just a little bit easier to bear. We may not feel that we can compare ourselves to someone like the great Mother Teresa, but we also give in many different ways don't we? As a member of a church community, we give to support various organizations that support others. We do this by choosing a local charity and, and also through the Mission and Service Fund, which strives to accomplish three things, to help transform and save lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and build a better world. We also give of ourselves by the sharing what we can with others. Giving provides an opportunity to look beyond our own world and see the bigger picture. A great perspective can be achieved by stepping out of our own world and venturing into the world of other people. Your worries and challenges may not seem as significant when compared to other people's situations. I think first this morning of the generosity of a simple innkeeper in Bethlehem, who made room for a young couple about to give birth to the very one we celebrate. It is people like the many throughout our world who struggle day to day to make ends meet, to have enough food to feed their families, who are lonely after the loss of a loved one. We as a community find ways to reach out to those closest to us, don't we? We share our time with others, we send a card, make a call, check on someone who is going through a rough patch. We make soup for a drive through soup lunch. We craft things for a missile to a market. Hours and hours of time put in so that our congregation can do a little something to support its ministry. There are many stories that I'm sure each of you could share of generous acts of kindness that you know of. Those that you have personally received and those that you've given. These stories never fail to bring smiles and warmth to our hearts. This week, I was looking at the many different stories of the, United, of the United Church of Canada's Mission and Service Fund and what it supports. The one that stood out to me had to do with music because of all the beautiful music we've enjoyed during Advent and Christmas. I do believe that all people somehow know that nothing stirs the heart and brings together people quite like music. Music has the power to change our world, and when we harness it, we can too. Here are just a few examples of how the Mission and Service Fund has partnered with churches from across the country to lift people through the ministry of music. 
At Sprucedale United Church in Chatham, Ontario, it has supported an outreach ministry that provides free ukulele lessons to adults so they can provide entertainment to local retirement and nursing homes. Oh my gosh, isn't that awesome? But the MS Fund has also supported the Prairie Points Pastoral Charge in southwestern Saskatchewan with a grant to license songs to create a condensed songbook for use in hospitals and lodges. And at Port Nelson United Church in Burlington, Ontario, it helped fund a new handbell choir. I don't know about you, but I have, I, it always puts a smile on my face when I hear one of those choirs. Sarah Charters, she's the director of philanthropy, and the president of the United Church of Canada's foundation, said, when harnessed for good, music helps us take important steps to social justice. Looking back, music has played a key role in anti-war, civil rights, and women's movements. How many of us, on a personal level, have been motivated to make a life change after listening to a song or turn to a music to soothe our spirit. Music is the language of the spirit. At the beginning of this series of reflections, I ask you to what you typically do on Boxing Day. Do you fall into a turkey coma? Hit the sails? Tidy up after the aftermath of company and presence? Maybe all three. But I know that each of you give in so many valuable ways, as I mentioned earlier. And right now, I want you to know that you are doing much more than you realize. Your generosity is restoring dignity, putting food on a table and a roof over someone's head, letting many know that they aren't alone and providing education because of some of the generosity gives others a second chance. Through your gifts, you are bringing great joy. Treasure that thought today. Treasure knowing that you are making a difference on this day that has somehow morphed into becoming more about getting a deal at stores. You are giving the best gifts of all, compassion and hope. May God bless us with wisdom to appreciate all that we have and all that we have to give. Like Mary, the shepherds, the Magi, and Jesus himself, let's go into the new year treasuring, pondering, glorifying, praising, and giving. Let's take love out of any box we put her in. Amen. And now let us join our voices for our closing hymn this morning, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Let's sing.
nothing boxed in Jesus' love, not rules, not borders, not petty disagreements. We too are called to let love break loose and through our lives. As we leave, may God bless us to live with a caring and daring heart, one that not only knows it is better to give than to receive, but also that it is in giving that we do receive. May God, who is creator, and Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, bless us to live generously today and in all the days to come. Amen and amen. Thank you.